Hey everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a nice little early game slate video. It starts at 3 o'clock Eastern, so it's a few hours from now. Um, so we have some pretty good pitching today. Uh, this six-game slate uh, has some big games in it, like the Milwaukee-Colorado game, which is expected to score over 12 runs. And so it's definitely going to be interesting to try to stack like Milwaukee and then maybe mix in some Colorado players, as well as uh, Oakland and uh, Atlanta game, and, and also the Dodgers playing and the Yankees playing. So um, obviously there's some good teams playing, and uh, we'll have to see how that kind of goes. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the pitchers, uh, my overall favorite is Spencer Strider. Now, he's been pitching really well. He's had some extremely big uh, strikeout games, and he's definitely in a situation where he can do that. Oakland has been kind of weird where they have had some games where they've hit good pitchers pretty well, but I think that his strikeouts are just too high where he's going to be somebody that is going to be able to do pretty good, and it's going to be really hard for Oakland to win this game as well, so he's going to have a really op good opportunity to get the W. And he's had a lot of really good games lately. He's had a couple of bum games, uh, oddly against one against Washington and one against San Francisco. But he's had a lot of really good games, and he's got to be the top overall option on the slate. There's just not a whole lot left. Uh, I mean, aside from Castillo and Kershaw, nobody really flashes upside that could to keep up with him. Um, Castillo is in an interesting situation now. He's going against the White Sox, which is our a better team than Oakland, but they're very streaky. He has 40-point upside, and you can see he's got a lot of 40-point games here. Um, his biggest risk is really the strikeouts. He's not quite as a strikeout heavy as uh, Spencer is, uh, but he's still a pretty good pitcher, and he's still pitching pretty well. Um, now he is, I believe, coming off an injury, so you have to be aware of that. But he is getting uh, quality start bonuses and stuff like that, so... Um, he's somebody to consider in this particular matchup, uh, but it's just not quite as ideal as uh, as the Atlanta vs. Oakland uh, games pitcher. And then finally, last but not least, is Kershaw. Um, now, he flashes 60-point upside, uh, so he's the guy that probably has the highest upside on the slate. I mean, he can get the strikeouts and he can do shutouts and stuff like that, but... Um, he has not been as consistent this year, and his, you know, his floor is quite a bit lower than the other guys. And, you know, you're really not saving much money off of, like, Strider or Castillo at this position, just the way that they sit. So, really, um, I think he's somebody that you could, you know, as a good alternate to try to change things up. But I think Strider and Castillo are in the best position. Uh, it's going to be hard to, like, decide which guy to pick, really. Be just because they're both in you know, pretty decent situations. I do think that uh, Castilla is probably a little bit weaker in the matchup. But overall, they both just have really good upside. And, you know, obviously, uh, Strider can hit that, you know, crazy game if where he gets like 55 points or 60 points or even 80 if he, uh, you know, has a big strikeout game again like he did last week against Colorado. So, um, as for first base, uh, now this is a little bit dependent on who starts for these, some of these teams, but um, I, I, it seems that maybe uh, Kiston Hiera for uh, Milwaukee is going to start and not uh, Talies. And if that's the case, then he's somebody that we definitely want to take a look at. If Talies starts, then he's going to have to, he's got to be in play simply because he's a home run hitter. Uh, but uh, he is a little bit more risky than Hiera is if he if he uh, starts. Um, as you can tell, uh, Talies is like a home run hitter. He's going to hit big points sometimes when he hits home runs, but he doesn't have a good batting average lately, and uh, he's just kind of hit or miss. I liken him to, like, from a hitting perspective, to, like, Andrew Jones. If we had Andrew Jones back in the day, uh, when he was, like, hitting, like, 240, but he was just, like, mashing a bunch of home runs at the same time. It kind of feels very similar to that. Uh, the next guy I like at this position is Will Smith. Um, he's been having some really massive games. Of course, he's a little boomer bust, but he's been hitting the ball really well. Um, and then Cal Raleigh, he's actually pretty inexpensive for his potential production. Um, he's been having a lot of really good games as of late, 
And so he's somebody that I think is definitely good to consider. And he could also be somebody you could consider for that uh, that uh, uh, utility spot on on FanDuel. And then um, the Atlanta pitching duo of uh, Darno and uh, oops, and uh, William Contreras. Whoever starts, if they both start, then they're both in play. But they both hit the ball pretty well. I think Contreras has been hitting the ball better. I think Atlanta is just going to tear up Oakland again. So I expect both whoever starts or maybe even both of them to have um, solid games here. Uh, I really like what Contreras has been doing lately. He actually had a couple opportunities yesterday. Have some really big hits yesterday, but they kept walking him. So, <laughs> which might be wise in, in their case. Um, and then finally, but last but not least, is Freddie Freeman. He's been hitting the ball well in San, against San Francisco, and I think he's a solid option in this matchup. He's got a home run potential, obviously, every time he steps up to the plate, and so and his batting average is extremely high right now. Um, so at second base. Uh, so one of the nice appeals is going to be the fact that Colton Wong is out, which he's usually somebody that you have to play in this type of situation. It looks like he's going to be out at least because he's got an injury. Um, so if he doesn't play today, which he's likely not, uh, Luis Urias, and, uh, who's a lot less expensive, as well as Hayara, probably have more likelihood of playing. And with the with these uh, guys, they definitely have some potential in the matchup, and they're less expensive than Wong and uh, Talizas, and so they and plus they have multi uh, position situation hitting. So not only can you save money with them, but you can throw them in you know lots of different positions with the Urias being at third base, shortstop, and second base, and I think Carriera can play first base or second base. So. Uh, lots of movement from those guys, so that can make it make it easy to uh, roster them, and then roster the bigger players that you want. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is, it, I think, is going to have a pretty solid chance to have a good game here against uh, Milwaukee. Uh, Eric Lyar is a good uh, pitcher usually, but he's in this matchup is he's not uh, that great. He's really risky to be honest, and so I think Colorado is going to manage to score some runs today against uh, Milwaukee as well. Um, and then uh, some alternates off of the Milwaukee game. Um, uh, Louis Rangifo for the LA Angels. Um, he's going up against Drew Hutchinson, it looks like. And he's been hitting the ball pretty well as of late. He's going to have some three-point games mixed in. But he has some actual potential to have some big games. Um, and then the same I can say for Javier Baez. He's been hitting the ball pretty well as of late. Um, above, above his normal average, so um, he's had several two-hit games and things like that. And if you can pull that off and mix in some RBIs against some, uh, uh, you know, he's got a tough matchup against Patrick Sandoval, but I still think he, he bats the right way, and so we definitely like him as an option. And he's also got uh, cross uh, potential when it comes to his uh, where he where he plays the position on on FanDuel, because he can also play at shortstop. Um, at third base, we have more of the same with Luis Urias, Luis Rangifo. Uh, but my overall favorite play here, and this has been my favorite play all week for uh, LA Dodgers, is Justin Turner. He's been just murdering the ball lately, and I think he's somebody that you got to try to fit in the lineup. Plus, he's only 3000 bucks, so even with a high expensive pitcher, you can afford to, uh, uh, you can afford to mix him in. Uh, Eugenio Suarez is also looking pretty solid today. He's been a little bit hit or miss of late, but he's in a really good position, and I like his matchup and his uh, potential in a game against, uh, it looks like it's going to be Michael Kopech, and so he's one of the pitchers on the White Sox I tend to like to go against. And then finally, last but not least, is Austin Riley. Um, obviously, Riley has been uh, killing the balls of late, hitting them runs a lot. And he's just playing really well. Obviously, he's super expensive, so you're going to have to pay down some other places in order to get him in the lineup. But I think that's definitely possible. Uh, Lewis Urias again here. And then also Willie, Mc Willie Adamis. Uh, sorry for butchering your name. I feel like I butcher his name all the time. Um, he's been hitting the ball pretty well, and he's got a nice little plus matchup today. If he can hit a home run, that would def definitely help pay off his price. Well, he's just in a solid spot. 
And so if you want to put Urias here and you want to fade him, you know, there are ways that you have to deal with these Colorado games, especially with Milwaukee. Like six or seven or eight of the guys in the lineup for Milwaukee are going to have home run potential. And so it's just, you know, man managing like which three or four you want to use. Uh, and then hopefully you can, I guess three is probably the best m number. But, uh, um, and then just hope that you've picked the right three that hit the home runs. That's kind of how I go with uh, the slate. Like yesterday I did that and that's, it paid off for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's kind of hit or miss day to day when it comes to, because, you know, different guys are going to go off and they all have the potential in these matchups. Um, then Baez, again, who I mentioned, and then uh, another guy I like is Trey Turner against uh, San Francisco in this matchup. Um, against Alex Cobb, he should have a pretty solid opportunity to have a big game. He he had a huge, like, streak a few game about a week ago. He's kind of cooled off a little bit, but he's still got the potential to have big games here. And then finally, Dansby Swanson. Uh, just I just really like a uh, Atlanta today against Oakland. He, they just look, they have a lot of upside, and uh, he's a guy that tends to do well in those upside-type games. And then for the outfielders, um, obviously we have uh, Andrew McCutcheon. He's my home run uh, feel for Milwaukee, the biggest home run feel. He has kind of been hit or miss lately, but I don't know. Something about him today just feels like he's going to have a big game. Um, Yelich obviously hit a home run yesterday, and I feel like he can definitely do it again. Uh, and he's a little bit more expensive than what he's been, but uh, he still looks like he's a pretty safe option, especially if he can pull a home run again. Um, Ward for the LA Angels looks pretty solid today. He's also pretty inexpensive. He, he actually he, he's always underpriced for what his production is. It feels like, even though he does go through stretches where he doesn't do pretty good, do, do so well, he's been doing okay. And this is a nice little plus matchup for uh, the Angels. Uh, obviously, Mike Trout and Andrew Judge are people you have to consider just because of their home run potential. But Andrew Judge is extremely expensive now, so I'm not sure if he's super worth it. But Trout's been hitting the ball extremely well um, the last few games, and he's had some massive games, if you can tell. He's not had a whole lot of bad ones, but it'll still be hard to get him in the lineup. Now, I, 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 I've debated this one pretty hard to decide whether we think I think that we should even consider this guy, uh, which is Glenn Cario Stanton. I mean, he is just a home run or bust all the way around uh, right now. He has not been hitting the ball well at all, as you can see. He's got lots of zeros here. Uh, but he has that price at $3,000, so you could fit him in there. And, you know, on Fandle, we're more reliant on hitting home runs and getting those, you know, things. So he's somebody to consider. I don't think I want to use him, but I, I think that if you only, you know, if you just desperate for a 3,000 point guy, then he could be somebody you would uh, consider. Uh, Randall Gercheck is a guy that I like pretty good today. He had a massive game yesterday, uh, 44 fantasy points. He has some upside in, for Colorado. Uh, he's, there's just, you know, there's not a ton of guys that have a lot of upside for Colorado, but thing about Colorado is, is that they do a lot better at home than they do on the road. And so some of their stats can be a little bit disjointed, uh, obviously because of that nice air. And it's home run town. So. And then finally, last but not least, is Hunter Renfro. Um, obviously, he had a big game yesterday, and he has some big games. He's a little bit more boom or bust, that, but when he booms, a lot of times he has some really solid outings. So that's pretty much what I have for this slate. Um, I think you can probably make some pretty good lineups with the... Uh, what's available on this particular slate. Um, if you uh, have time, feel free to jump into the Discord. There's a link below in the description. Uh, we definitely talk about the uh, slates and stuff there and what you know what players look good and stuff like that. So um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to leave them below and have a nice day, guys.